to Learn Free Music Theory lesson number 30. Today we're going to be doing the exam for level number 2. <laughs> so this should be fun. Um, if you took the last one, you kind of know that you know it's not a huge deal. It's just kind of to gauge and see how well you've absorbed the material that we went over. All right, and it also it's a it's a way to kind of uh, grade yourself and see how uh, you handle it when it's actually in a kind of a ask ask you kind of an area. <laughs> I don't even know if that even makes any sense, but I think you know maybe what I'm talk trying to say. <laughs> Okay, anyway, basically this is just going to be like a course to go through, uh, you know, like when you're doing those courses, you know, uh, obstacle course, there you go, yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's just get right started, let's just get started, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. So uh, just remember that I'm going to show this example, so first thing you should do is write it down, okay? Once it's written down, then what I would like you to do is uh, go through it, and then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show all the answers at the end of the video, just in case you forgot how this all works. Okay? So basically, copy it, copy it down, solve it. I'm trying. I'm going to not tell you how to solve it, and then at the end, just keep watching, and it's going to go in the same order. Okay? All right. Let's do this. Woo! Okay. Good luck, guys. Alright guys, so here's our first one, and this one is air fixing. So, uh, what you're going to have to do in this is basically look through this and look for any errors, okay? So, I can't really say too much, but one thing I do want to clarify is just in case you're confused of what this is, this is a, this is a group of four sixteenth notes, okay? And a little tiny hint, you want to look for a time signature first, <laughs> okay? Any, anything other than that, uh, just wait until the end of the video and you're going to see uh, the answers for the section. Okay, so good luck. See ya. Hey guys, alright, so our next one is good old transposition. So what we're going to first do is, uh, so we have two, oop, I wanted to write this one too. Okay, so I've got two exercises or questions here. Each of them is worth 10 marks, okay? Uh, depending on, like if you get the thing transposed, that's going to be worth a mark into the right key. That's like worth one mark right there. And then you have to make sure that, you know, you have all your bar lines, your double bar lines, and stuff like that. And if you get all that all good, and your clefs, and your time signatures, and your key signatures right, those will be worth marks too. So like one mark for key signature, one mark for clef, one mark for your bar lines, all those things, and then any little mistakes where you have problems from what I see, then deduct, okay? The notes will be worth the rest of the mark. So any mistakes you have in your notes, then that's minus one mark. And uh, always try to write as clearly as you can. Uh, sometimes <laughs> on the whiteboard, it's a little bit hard to read, especially if with a camera when it's kind of far away, but uh, try to do the best I can. Um, but anyway, all right, so, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Other than, okay, so this says name the key and transpose up a major third, okay? So you're going to have to name what key this is in. should be very obvious. Just look at the key signature and your notes, okay? Uh, and then for the, down, the one here, I just put down minor sixth, so... You're still going to name the key, so name the key, because you always want to figure out what key it's in, and then transpose to whatever key that you think it needs to go into. Then I put that key signature that goes with that key, and then write out your thing, and watch out for accidentals. I have accidentals in the second one, so make sure that you uh, do them properly. Okay? Alright, so good luck with this one. I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys! Okay, so for cadences, uh, we're going to do four main exercises or questions. Uh, the first one is name four cadences with the Roman numerals, like, uh, you know, like using one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, whatever chord number you need. Okay, so remembering which order they go with. So name the four cadences. I talked about them in the cadence video. There's two that we're only going to draw, but there's four that I explained. Okay. 
So just write those four out with the Roman numerals, showing basically the chord order. And so that'll be worth five marks, this will be worth five marks, this will be worth five marks, and this will be worth five marks. Okay? So uh, the first one is do a one in C major, uh, perfect cadence. Okay? Uh, here, uh, B flat major, perfect cadence, and then here, D major, plagal cadence. That should kind of make this easier, shouldn't it? <laughs> Since I kind of already told you the names of two of them. But anyway, uh, oh, and I forgot to put a double bar line here. But anyway, uh, so what you're going to do is basically uh, construct your cadences, and that's pretty it, pretty much it. So just remember what pattern they go with, then write out your uh, chord tones, make sure you write in your key signatures, and uh, then fly out her. Okay, should have fun with this, it's not that bad. Okay, so uh, I'll just make the answer one now. Well, I guess you'll see the next test, but I'm gonna be filming the answer one since I don't like to uh, erase this thing and then draw the whole thing out for the answers, it just doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so, see so ya. Yeah. All right guys, so uh, our next one is rhythm, and this one is gonna be uh, a kind of big conglomerate of things. So the first section we have over here is going to be one mark for each and you have to name the note or the rest. So this one, this one, this by the way in case you can't see it, it has one, two, three, four lines. This has five dots, this is has a little three over it with three and there's only one line and this is, says two and there's two over there. Uh, so you have to say what they are and uh, yeah, that's basically it uh, for that part. Now over here we have add up the beats. So in 4-4 four, four time, that's how you know how many beats it's worth, right? Because otherwise it would have no real beat. Uh, you're going to basically do these little questions, so you add them up. So I've got some of these uh, rhythm, like the bigger groupings of notes that I was talking about in the rhythm lesson in this level. So we've got the 7, the 6, and the 5. So we're going to add all these up, and then you say the total number of beats after the equal sign. And then here, this is 3-4, so now we're changing it to 3-4. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I didn't want 3 four. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... <clears throat> I actually had that planned as 6-8, and whoopsie, I had a little mishap there. It didn't seem right to me. So yeah, that's 6-8. Okay, so add these things up in 6-8 time because 3-4 would make no difference. <laughs> okay, um, and yeah, it's not like there's actually four beats per one of these because it's not actually in real 4-4 four, four, or 6-8 time. I'm just basically giving you the bottom number to know, To I want you to kind of add these up in different ways. Okay, so basically what would this be all worth if this was written in 6-8 time? Not that it actually fits out to be six beats, because then otherwise there'd be no purpose of doing this. Okay, so yeah, so there's one question here, one question there, and one question there. Alrighty. And now the last one is, place beats under the notes. So you're going to go through here and you're going to place like where beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four, or beat nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, go in this one. And so each one of these, is, each one of these lines is going to be worth one mark. So basically, uh, if you mess up anything on either one of these lines, then bye-bye. Mark is gone. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so it's for a total of uh, 15 marks in total. So there's uh, four marks here, three marks here, six marks there, and two marks there. All right, so uh, have fun with that, and yeah. Okay, guys, so our next one is modes. All right, so modes. So we've got two sides here. We've got the mode side, the mode name, and the pattern, okay? So basically what it looks like for the tones and semitones. So the semitone marks where the, the where it's basically like this little thing, the slur is marking where the semitones are. So it's whole tone, semitone, whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, semitone, whole tone, okay? So you have to fill out the blank side to this. So you need to you need to name this mode and put it over there and give me the name for it. Then on this side, 
you need to show me and write out what Locrian mode looks like. Then you have to look at this one and give me a name for it. Then you have to write Phrygian mode out, and then you have to give me a name for this one. So it's like going back and forth. Um, okay, then down here, we have write Dorian mode starting on B. And so this one's worth five marks, and this is worth five marks. So one mark per one of these, and five marks if you get this right or wrong. So you have to start on B, and you're going to use accidentals and draw them in whole notes, and use uh, the slurs to mark them. So that's it. That's modes. So let's see how you do on it. Okay, and finally, we have our terms. Okay, so we have conmoto. So you're going to basically do swapping, filling out either side. So conmoto means, what does live and quick mean? Or lively and quick. What does poco a poco mean? I hope you remember that one. It's my favorite. Extremely slow and broad. What does that mean? Brilliant. Brilliante. Uh, more quickly. What does that mean? Tenuto. What does that mean? Loud and suddenly soft. Blah, blah, blah. And so if per one, each answer or each question there is worth two marks. So, hope you get do well. All right. All right, guys, so here's the answers for uh, the first one, error fixing. Now, uh, let's just go over what we need to do or what the corrections I made. So, number one, um, what we have to first do always when error fixing is check for the time signature. Now, instead of giving you a bogus time signature upside down or something like that, I decided just to put nothing and see if people remember to fix it. Or, I mean, not to fix it, but to you know actually add a time signature in. So by the first couple bars, it should be pretty obvious that this is in 4-4 four, four time. Because look, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 beats in this bar. Uh, this one has 2, but it has nothing. I mean, that one's kind of like, that's a weird bar to begin with. Here, this is 4 beats, but it only works if you add them and put them into triplets. So, da-da-da-da-da-da. I was trying to build off that crazy, you know, the more uh, abstract rhythm than we usually had before. So uh, basically, what I guess it's more hybrid or duple or whatever compound. Uh, I can't think of the terminology right now. <laughs> okay, so now on one, we want to put 4-4 four, four in, so I put that in. Now for the next one, you can see two and three are the exact same thing, so I thought if you find one, then you'll find the other, and then that's good. So here, uh, basically, you're going to have to flip these up. Now, what I'm going to do for you guys is if you flip them up, but you forgot you didn't put them into triplets, or you put them into triplets but didn't flip them up, uh, just take one mark off, OK? Don't take both marks away, because then that might be a little bit cruel. Because some of you, I'm not sure if everyone would have got that one. I think error fixing is one of those ones where it's more like, uh, it's kind of like when you go for an English exam, they're always like, you know, it's kind of more abstract. It's not like right and wrong kind of way. You have to think and bend it. So you guys, is ex you might, you know, see things slightly different than I do. So that's okay. But yeah, okay, let's keep going. So those should go up with the triplets, okay? Uh, because this this is the middle line right here. So two of them are below, so they that kind of balances the odds and push, pushes them up. The one that's above shouldn't be the one that dictates the whole group. Yeah, don't mind the car that just went by. I can't really control that. <laughs> okay, so next thing is, here I purposely put both those stems up. I thought that'd be a pretty obvious one. So both of these are, should be going down. Uh, now here, that just stays completely the same. It's just a group of running 16th notes. And here, I've got, again, this is going up and it should be going down. So again, fix that. Here, I've got rest groupings. So I've got two eight, uh, quarter rests. And now, if you remember our grouping, it, this is strong, weak, medium, weak. So medium and weak need to be combined together, so they should be in a half rest. So that completes the bar. Now for 9 and 10, 
One, we have two tied notes that have no real reason to be tied. So two random quor uh, yeah, quarter notes. <laughs> and that's, you just have to put them together. I mean, there's no real reason to have those separated like that. So you put them into a half note. And then for 10, uh, there's a part of the bar missing. There's no rest at all. So you add a half rest again because you have medium and weak. So you finish that off with the half rest. And that finishes off that bar. Oh, and I actually forgot to just say something also. Here I put a double bar in. Okay, there's a double bar there and there definitely should not be. Because it's like right in the middle of a line and there's music on the other side. So you just convert that to a single line. I actually forgot to say that. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so anyway, next one. When we get to 11 here, both of these are doing the same thing. They should be um, not going off to the left. Also, this stem is right, but this one is wrong, okay? So, uh, but when you join these two together, it can both go down because they're of equal distance apart. So you can pick if you want it to go up or down. So if you have these going up on the right-hand side, then you're actually totally fine. If they're going down, that's fine too. Either way works, okay? Because it's on, they're equally apart from the middle line and there's only two of them, so it could go either way, it doesn't matter. Um, now, when 13 and 14 and 15, 15 is obviously the double bar line at the end. 13 is fixing the rest, because it's backwards, noticing that the rest is wrong. And then 14 is basically adding the rest that you need to basically work it out. So what I have here is uh, a quarter rest and then another half rest because this, if you take this into account, this is beat one, so that's your strong beat. This is beat two, your weak beat, so it needs to be a single rest. And then here we've got medium and then weak, so that needs to be combined into another rest uh, altogether there. So that's why we've got it that way. So yeah, there's uh, the 15. So for each mistake, uh, take the mark off pretty much, and if you got everything right, good job. I think this is the hardest thing probably to get fully correct because it can be a little bit weird. So if you didn't do too well on this, don't worry. I think you'll probably be fine. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to the next one. All right, guys, so uh, this is our next one. So the answers for transposition. So the key for the first one was F major. Uh, it's pretty obvious by the B flat in the key signature, and then how it ends on F, and it even starts on F too. So that usually you always want to look at the last note of the piece to tell you what key it's in, combined with what key signature it's in as well. Because this key signature will pretty much determine whether it's one of two keys, and then because uh, it could be either D minor or F major. So if it ended on a D, then it's probably going to be D minor if you also see the raised seventh in throughout it. But uh, since it ends on F, it's pretty obvious that it's an F. Okay? So yeah, so that one's an F. So then you want to transpose it up a major third. So up a major third from F is A. So we're in A major now. So we want to change the key signature to A major's key signature, which is F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. And then we've got the key signature, or the time signature of three, four time. So now I have to take my first note, which is an F, and move it up a major third, which is an A. And now I need to just keep the relationship the same of the interval. So from here to here is a perfect fifth. So from there to there should be a perfect fifth. Okay? Or you can just even look. It's space to space. So it's still on a space, so it's space to space. And that's going down to the next space, so you go down to the next space, go up to the next space, and then go down to... And since there's no accidentals, it's not really hard. I tried to make this kind of an easy one for you guys. So uh, that, that's pretty much the same thing. They're all in lines, you go through there. And now notice one thing is that I've had to change some of the stem directions. Like this one, these are going down, but up here they're going up. Why? Because now everything's higher. So these ones are up on E, whereas they were on C before. So now I've had to put those ones down. And uh, I think that's most of the changes. Yeah, this one was going up before, now it's going down, because they're up higher, but that's about it. So 
Uh, so check that against your own and uh, deduct the marks as basically, you know, if you mess this up, take off a mark. If you mess that up, take off a mark. If you messed this, uh, you know, pattern, take off a mark. If you missed a note and you put it in the wrong place, take off a mark. If you mess, messed up the key signature, take off a mark. If you messed up what key it's supposed to be in, yeah. <laughs> then you might want to start over because everything's going to be wrong. But anyway, so that's why intervals are very important to know. Okay, now, um, next one, it's in C major. Now it's a minor sixth going down. So C major, why is it C major? Well, there's no key signature and it ends on C. What are these accidentals there for? Ah, oh, they're there because I wanted to show you what you need to do with accidentals. So I just threw in those two and I tried to, I used them on the same note so that maybe you wouldn't forget about, you know, it's kind of all consistent with each other so it's easier to think. Although I didn't put it there to see if you'd notice that. So anyway, so a minor six down from C is E, okay? So we're in E major, because we're doing major to major transposition. Um, okay, now, so if you're in E major, you need your key signature, so that's F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. So you want to keep the same time signature, so you put 4-4 four, four in. And I had to squish this in a little bit when I, after I had drawn this whole thing out, I was, I was trying to squish it in. So hopefully you can read this. Maybe I'll just zoom in a little bit, and then hopefully you can see it a little bit better. I think you can see it better. Anyway, so here um, we've got B as our first note. Because the first note here is G, so major or minor six down is B. Okay. All right. So uh, not a major six, a minor six. How you can tell is okay. How I do this is same on G. Okay. Now I go down a sixth. Okay. And now what is a sixth? It's a, pretty much B. So a B. I just go from this key to this key, okay, and now I'm, I'm on B, so now I think, okay, what's, uh, now I'm in the scale of B major, so what would be my sixth note? It would be a G sharp, so that's the major version, so if I lower the G sharp down to the G, now I'm in the sixth note, and it's a minor sixth, so from B to G is a minor sixth down, there you go, that's how I think of it in my head at least, but anyway. Okay, so I had to change the sem direction here, and then I just kept the relationships all the same from here to here. That's a fourth, so that should be a fourth. This is just going down, so that goes down, that goes up, goes up, blah, blah, blah. Now here you have to pay attention because there's an accidental. So this is going to be lower than whatever it is in the key signature. So over here, it's, there's a D sharp, so it's raising this up. So I have to lower it down from whatever it would have been normally. So from a sharp, you use a flat, and or, yeah, you use a natural, and the natural brings it down, okay? Because if it's already sharp, it's already high to begin with, so one step down from a sharp is a natural, okay? So you use a natural to lower it down, and stem direction is pretty much the same except for here. If your stem is going up in this area, you could get away with that because it's the middle line and it doesn't matter. You can go up or down. I just chose to go down because the other ones are going down. Uh, okay, next. Now this is going down and this should be switched so it's going up. Uh, because this bottom note here is way farther than this one is from the middle. So this, and there's two on below and there's only one above. So that means they should be going up, not down. Okay? Um, now again we've got the B flat up here so now this has to be a D natural in E major and this is pretty much the same it's pretty easy you just kind of keep the same relationship like this is on the line so you just go down to the space where it's you know, just pretty simple like that uh, this uh, you have to switch the stem direction here so it's going on D, C, B, G or A sorry <laughs> And then we've got that, and you have to switch to some direction for that as well. Then here, we're down on G, or sorry, not G, F. I'm going to B, okay? And I had to switch the stem direction for this one. And this could have been going up or down, but I just, just put it up for whatever sake. And here, 
uh, you just go down to E, and that's pretty much it. So that the um, that's your transposition answers. So hopefully that went well for you. And if not, don't worry about it. Just go back, review the transposition lesson, and just redo the homework a couple times. And yeah, then try doing, uh, try challenging yourself with these more. Just pick a random key and then transpose up or down until you get a lot better with it. Just like anything else, like you know, if you're trying to ride a bike or get better at baseball or basketball or math, you need practice. So this is the same like anything else. The more you practice transposition, the better you get at it. So quickly uh, write this down, and yeah. Or I guess you're kind of checking it, but whatever. Anyway, so we'll go on to the next one. There right, you guys. So the answers for the cadence are as follows. So cadence. Name four cadences with Roman numerals. So we've got perfect is 5-1, plagal 4-1, imperfect 1-5, and deceptive five to six, okay? So if you got all those right, five out of five. If you got one wrong, take two marks off. And for every other mark after that, take one extra mark. So you get two, you get a sec, a one free extra mark if you got all of them right. You get five out of five. If you got one wrong, then you got three out of five, okay? All right, now, perfect. Uh, so our next one over here is the C major, perfect cadence. So this one's in uh, no key signature, basically. And I forgot to draw my double byline, so I didn't put it in. But uh, uh, OK, so the first thing you want to do is you want to, first of all, know what cadence you have. So it's a perfect cadence, so it should be 5 to 1. So I have 5 and 1 written down here. Now, the next thing is to know the chord tone, or the notes that go with the chord. So we call those the chord tones. And so basically, we go G because the fifth note of C major is G. It's C, D, E, F, G. That's five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so G is the fifth note. Okay, now that's called the root of the chord, so we're gonna double it. So it's two Gs, a B, and a D. Okay, because it's a G, skip a note. So skip A, then go up to D, or B, sorry, <laughs> and then go to D. So it's G, B, D, G, G, B, D, and for the one chord, it's C, C, E, G. So again, you take the root of the chord. So one is the first note of the scale, so it's C. And basically, we just double that, so it's two Cs. And then we go up to a th basically the third note, which is E, and then the fifth note, which is G. So you're just skipping notes, OK? All right, and so we take those, and I find this is very, very helpful for a long time to do this, because uh, one, it gets you thinking this way in your head later on, but when you first start out, you have something physically to see what to cross off. So what I'll do even when I'm starting is I'll be like, okay, I need a G and a C. Those have to be in the base, so G, C. Okay, so I cross those out. Now, so just cross those two off. Okay, so I have G, B, and D left, and I have C, E, and G. Okay, I need my common note to be up in the treble clef, so I put the two Gs. Okay, good. So now I have B and D and C and E. And so what you want to do is make the two notes that are closest together kind of, uh, you want to voice lead them so they're smooth. We call smooth voice leading when it's moving not huge leaps, but very small distances. So we want the B to go to the C, and the D to go to the E, okay? So the D is going to the E here, and the B is going to the C. So I just put one on top and one on the bottom. There we go. Okay, so for the next one, it's B flat major in perfect cadence again. I wanted to emphasize the perfect because it's an important cadence, um, but this time using a different key. So B flat major, we write our key signature in, which is B flat and E flat, time signature 4-4. Four, four. I'm just using whole notes. I don't know what you actually use, but I don't really care about what, uh, what you really used at this point. Uh, whenever you're writing cadences, unless it says specifically to use a certain thing or it, like it has a time written up in front of you, uh, just use whole notes. They're really easy and you don't have to worry about getting in trouble with stem direction. <laughs> okay, so 
Uh, so our five to one, so the fifth note in B flat major is F, so we have F, F, A, C. Excuse me? So F, F, A, C. So F to uh, the first note of B flat major is B flat, of course. So we double B flat, two B flats, a D, and an F. So we go B, or sorry, F, F to B flat. That's our bass note, so five to one, da, da, right? And then we have F, A, C remaining, and we have B flat, D, F remaining. So again, we have the F in common, so we write that. And then again, I just put one on top and one on the bottom. Boom. Great. Awesome. Done. Okay. So, now D major plagal. Okay, so plagal. Uh, we need to have 4 to 1 instead of 5 to 1. So we've got 4 to 1 in Roman numerals written out here. So we are, the fourth note of D major is G. So it's G, G, B, D. Okay. And in uh, the one, the first note of D major is D, of course. And we have an F sharp uh, for the third note. So it's D, D, F sharp, A. So you just go up the white... Um, it's really hard trying to think of how someone without any experience on the piano would view music theory because that's how I grew up. So whenever I think of these notes, I'm always thinking of the, the keyboard in my head and it's like very visual, right? So I just think, oh yeah, so there's an F and so I just go D and then I skip E and then I go to F, but F is sharp in D major, so it just goes up. Yeah, I hope I'm not losing anyone. I'm just kind of talking quickly here, but okay. I, I imagine that if you made it this far through all the theory lesson videos and you studied really hard and you know everything really well, then you're probably following me pretty well. Okay, so D major, plagal, four to one, G, G, B, D, and D, D, F sharp, A. So basically same thing, done. So just take a look. Uh, key signature is F sharp to C sharp. Okay? So these are each worth five marks. How I want you to mark them is Make sure that your key signature is correct, that's worth one mark. Make sure your, um, your notes are correct, that's another mark. Uh, make sure that you're going in the right order, so five to one, that's another mark. Uh, make sure you have uh, basically these notes written out and you need to only have one note in the bass clef, so if you mess that up, that's another mark off, okay? I think that's four though, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, so uh, basically if you just get it perfect, take the five, and if you didn't, then take two off for the first mark if there's four things or whatever, but whatever. Uh, that's pretty much good. Okay, so yeah, let's move along to the next one. Okay guys, so here's the marks for your rhythm section. So the top one is, it's a group of 64th notes, a 32nd note for the second one, the one with the five is in a 128th rest. Uh, this is a dotted half note. This is eighth notes triplet, and this is eighth notes duplet, okay? Because with the three, it makes it a triplet, and with the two, it makes it a duplet, okay? But then you name also what type of note it is. So it's an eighth note, duplet, and triplet. Okay, so that's that. Um, now up here, we have add the beats, okay, so four, four times. So this one, the first answer is three, second answer is two, third answer is four, and fourth answer is six. Uh, how you get this is, in case you didn't know, when you have seven, it actually counts as four, and four would be one beat, okay? So that's one beat, two beat, or that's two and a, uh, that's another one beat and a half. So you've got two and a half plus another half there, so that's three. Now you have another one, so that's four, okay? And then here, that's one, two, three, four, and then half, and then this is this, so it's five, so it's four, and so that should be three. Three beats there, I think, so one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, that works out. Um, now six, six, eight, we've got each, each eighth note is a beat. So one, two, three, and then this is one beat and a half, plus this is half a beat, so that's two beat, and that's another one, so that's three. So that's three plus three, that's six. And then, uh, oh, oh no. 
I thought I wrote a dot in there. Hmm. That's supposed to be dotted. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so if you saw that as that, then obviously that's one mark less, so 18 is the, not the right answer, so it should actually be 17. Anyway, so that is two. Or it's more than two. It's, uh, no, it's not 17, because this is in 6, 8, so it should actually be... That was six beats before, so now it's four beats. So two minus two, that should be 16. Okay, so, sorry about that. <laughs> Probably had you scared there for a minute. Okay, so um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, ten, and then this should be three beats, because it's a duplet, so it counts on the time of three. So that's three beats again, and then that is three beats. So three, so six plus six, so that's 12. So 12 plus four, so 16. Got luck my math's up, yeah. Okay, now this one, that's six beats right here. Okay, that's a dotted, so that should be three beats, so one, two, three. And then the four is, even though it looks like four, it's a quadruplet, right? So it's actually three. So it's one, two, three beats. So one, two, three plus one, two, three. Three plus three is six. Here, this is a 16th note, so these two together make one beat, and this is half of a beat. So one beat plus three beats is four beats, plus the half is the four and a half. There you go. So that's four and a half there. Now, these ones, why I didn't give you much marks for them is because uh, I knew that it would be very uh, sort of iffy if someone can even get them right, because it's sort of one of those weird things. Okay. So if you didn't get this right, I don't really blame you too much because it's sort of hit and miss. I'm not really sure how people are, if they're going to get it right when I've got things like this going on. Because you might have it placed off slightly different, so whatever. But basically beat one and two come in here. This is half a beat, so that's the half beat right there. This is the start of beat three, and that's the start of beat four. And that finishes off that beat. This is the start of beat one, this is the start of beat two, this is the start of beat three. But uh, these are three lined, okay, so that's a 30 second. So seven should actually only be three, or so four, and then four, uh, put those two together, divide in half, that's two sixteenth notes, divided again, it is a one eighth note, which is only half a beat. So that's why we have a beat and a half rest over here. So this, all this is only half of a beat. And then here, so the four comes after this rest, because this is the, the, the rest starts on the end, or the halfway point of the third beat, okay? So that four comes after the rest. This, all these start there. Uh, nine, eight. Uh, this is four. Uh, so it's a quadruplet in uh, compound time there. So we have one starting on the first note. That's beat one. But beat two comes in between those two, and beat three comes in between those two. So we've got one, two, and three in that section right there. Then we have six. Uh, 16th notes, and they're not like any crazy thing because I don't have anything written above it. So it's just two 16th notes per beat. So it's just four, five, six. So out there, four should be under the first one, five should be under the, th uh, the third one, and six should be under uh, the fifth one. And then seven goes under the this one, that's eight, and then nine. There you go. Okay, so that's the rhythm one. Now let's move along. All right, guys, so here's the answer for modes. So our first one that you had to name is Dorian mode, okay? And now when you have to write Locrian mode, it's semitone, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 okay? Mixolydian mode is this one with the black on this side. And then Phrygian mode, you had to write it out. So it's semitone, tone, 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 semitone, tone, tone. And then Ionian mode is tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Oh, isn't that a major scale? <laughs> yep. So that's Ionian mode. Okay, now, uh, write the Dorian mode starting on B. So you have to start on B, goes up to B, and it's going to be sharped on those notes to give you the semitones that you need. So C sharp, G sharp, and F sharp. Okay? Uh, so, 
Hopefully you did well. If you got this totally wrong, then deduct the five marks off. If you missed one of these, then deduct one mark each for each one. So there we go. Finally, the answers for the terms. So Kanmoto means with motion. Vives, lively and quick. Poco poco, little by little. So extremely slow and broad meant grave. And brilliante means brilliant. I think I kind of gave it away a little bit just by pronouncing it. Not Italian. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, Piemoso was more quick. Lee. Tenuto, hold the note. Forte piano, loud then suddenly soft. Octava or 8VA, one octave higher or lower. And animato for animated. So there you go. Uh, I hope that was useful. So yeah, here we go. There's the end of the exam. So how do you guys feel? I feel pretty hot and sweaty. <laughs> Those lights have been on me for uh, about two and a half hours now because, you know, you only see me talking, but I have to go and write out these exams, so write all the questions, and so it takes a little time, but it's fun uh, that you guys get to actually, you know, partake in an online exam. So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you guys' mark was if you want to show it, if you want to share it with people. Uh, if it was low or you failed, um, <laughs> I think this was a tougher exam than the last one, definitely. So, because uh, I was trying to be a little bit more brutal with my uh, questions and less uh, nice. <laughs> I'm so evil like that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so if there's any section that you guys had a problem with, like you were confused, and you think it was that you didn't know it very well, then go back and review. And if you think it was that I must made the exam stupidly hard and you couldn't ever figure it out, then don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, uh, so yeah, leave a comment below. Let me know what the final result was for you, and let me know what you thought of the exam. Uh, I tried to make it as good as I possibly could. Uh, although, you know, I don't have any experience making exams for, like, students that I never taught or whatever. But yeah, it covers everything that we covered in level two there. And uh, hopefully that was good. So uh, hopefully, maybe you did well and you're feeling really encouraged right now. And if so, high five! Oh, you left me hanging. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry now. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, take care, guys, and I'll see you guys for the next level, level three. So, I will see you then. Bye!